If you like blueberry muffins, and who doesn't, you're going to absolutely love my recipe for blueberry cupcakes. They're classic vanilla cupcakes studded with fresh blueberries and topped with cinnamon sugar. But the best part is the swirled blueberry cream cheese frosting. We're using cake flour or pastry flour. It's a very fine textured soft wheat flour with a high starch content. One and two thirds cups. We're gonna sift this flour with other dry ingredients. Uh, we have to add to the flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, fresh baking powder, a half a teaspoon of fine sea salt. Because we're using a light cake flour, we're using a fine salt. And a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. And the reason for the baking soda is this recipe also calls for sour cream. So sour cream, buttermilk, I always add a little bit of baking soda to help with the leavening. So just sift this through a fine sieve. We want a fine crumb cake. So here's our dry ingredients in the bowl of your mixer. One half cup of butter, which is unsalted butter at room temperature. Cream that with two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar. Now to our creamed butter and sugar, add two large eggs. Cream that up well. Now the blueberries, to get them to incorporate and float in your batter, uh, I add just a little bit of the cake flour on top of the berries and swirl them around it, just to make them even drier. They will float better if they are dry. So don't put wet berries in, they'll sink to the bottom. Just a nice little coating of flour on your berries. And three quarters of a cup of sour cream. The sour cream will make a very nice moist cupcake. And one teaspoon of vanilla. Now add your dry ingredients. This is a nice, rich, fragrant batter. And now just add your blueberries, fold these in, and scoop your beautiful batter into cupcake papers. And uh, these papers are half cup size. This scoop is a little less than that. Now there's a little bit of a sugary topping that goes on this. It's made out of white sugar, brown sugar, and cinnamon. Sprinkle it on top of each cupcake then uh, if any of this left over, I suggest you make some cinnamon toast tomorrow morning. And preheat your oven, very, very important, 375 degrees, and bake for approximately 25 minutes. So I'm making the cream cheese frosting. 10 tablespoons of butter, eight ounces of cream cheese. We have two and two thirds cups confectioner sugar, already sifted to get out any lumps. And don't forget to add a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And now strain about a quarter of a cup of blueberry jam. I have a lot of blueberry jam at home, so this is a good use of a tiny bit of it. You have to strain it to get out the seeds and the skins. Okay, so there is our Beautiful frosting. See how smooth and creamy it is? Oh, so great. And now for a little secret technique. Pour three tablespoons of your blueberry jam on the surface of your frosting. And now with a spoon, here's your little pastry bag fitted with a plain tip. You could use a star tip if you like, but a plain tip works very well. Now fold down the top of your bag and just layer this in to your bag. You're just putting dollops of the frosting with the blueberry into the bag. Then you swirl it on. Pretty. And keep swirling until you have all the cupcakes covered with this beautiful frosting. 
I think you are going to adore these. It's amazing how simple frosting like this can transform an ordinary cupcake into something really special. Now, wouldn't you like to serve that to someone? Enjoy. These cupcakes are a smaller adaptation of one of my signature desserts, which I call Mile High Lemon Meringue Pie. These have a tart lemon curd and lightly browned peaks of frosting, and they're bound to make everyone feel like they just ate a piece of lemon meringue pie, but they're cupcakes. We need three cups of all-purpose flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of baking powder. And cream the butter, two sticks of room temperature butter, two cups of granulated sugar. The sugar starts to almost melt with the butter and get nice and smooth. And four large eggs. I'm trying to pick the biggest eggs. One teaspoon of best vanilla. You need the zest of three lemons. It's a lot of lemon zest, but that's what makes these so lovely and lemony. I love lemon. Add two tablespoons of lemon juice. And your dry ingredients. Alternately with one cup of buttermilk. Now, if you don't have any buttermilk, you can make your own buttermilk at home. Just take one cup whole milk and add one tablespoon of white vinegar or cider vinegar to your milk. And let it stand for a little while and it curdles and acts like buttermilk. And the last little bit of buttermilk. And you're ready to fill your cupcake liners. And I'm going to use an ice cream scoop to do this as I did with the blueberries. And that will make 24 delicious cupcakes. Preheat your oven to 325 degrees and you rotate the cupcakes halfway during the baking time, which is about 25 minutes. So I will just continue to fill, bake, and then I'll show you how we decorate. So I'm now going to show you how to make a delicious lemon curd. You need eight egg yolks and two whole eggs and a nice heat-proof glass bowl. And I wanted to show you a new trick that I just learned for separating eggs. Just break your eggs into a flat plate like this and use a very flexible plastic bottle and just slurp up the egg yolks. It's much easier than any other way of separating eggs and the egg whites will be used for the meringue. Now that is a really clever way to separate eggs and these eggs will now be turned into a delicious lemon curd. So mix up your eggs, add one cup of sugar, Whisk the sugar into the egg yolks and two thirds of a cup plus two tablespoons of lemon juice. Now place this on top of a <coughs> pot of simmering water. You're creating a bain marie. It's used to control the heat and prevent the eggs from scrambling. And just stir, not too vigorously, just to warm it and thicken it. So I'm happy to report that the lemon curd has cooked very slowly. You can see that it is already very nice and thick. If you remove this, you can then stir in the butter. And it's just two tablespoons of butter. The butter will also help thicken the curd as the curd cools. And now we're going to make the meringue. So into two thirds cup of water, add one and a half cups of granulated sugar. Add to this, to keep it malleable, two tablespoons of corn syrup. You want to dissolve the sugar and heat it until it reaches 230 degrees. So now your egg whites, you want to beat them until they're soft peak. And those are the egg whites from the egg yolks. Now when the Egg whites reach almost soft peak. Sprinkle in two tablespoons of sugar. This will keep the egg whites from breaking. I'll just turn that on low. Now they're nice and glossy and smooth. Okay, it has just reached 230 degrees. Take out your thermometer and just swirl it around a little bit to get some of those bubbles out. 
and then just pour at high speed with your mixer and slow, steady stream right into your meringue. You can see how much more voluminous the egg whites have become. And then you have to beat this for a few minutes just to allow it to thicken and cool. Okay, so here we have our frosting nice and fluffy. And we're ready to assemble our lemon meringue cupcakes. So we have our lemon curd, which will go right on top of each cupcake. Just a coin-sized round. Okay, so now we're ready to top it with this beautiful meringue. And I have fitted the bag with a large star tip. Now give yourself room to play around. Now I think it would be pretty to do kind of a large swirl of meringue on top. Cover the lemon curd completely. That's our surprise. And every time I create something like this, I wonder how did they do it in the days of Louis XIV? How did they make all of this without electric mixers and without gas stoves? It's quite amazing. Finish this little guy off. There. Very pretty. So one last step uh, to brown the meringue. So this is our little handheld. Just lightly toast the top. So pretty. Oh, I love how this looks. So here are 24 gorgeous lemon meringue cupcakes. I think uh, everyone will love these, including you. Enjoy. There are many theories about the origin of red velvet cake, but one thing is for certain, the Southern specialty has become a favorite all across America. It's hard to resist its deep red chocolate color and tangy cream cheese frosting, especially when made into cupcakes. Let me show you how to make them. Two and a half cups of cake flour. Level your cake flour after you dip two and a half cups into a sieve. Cake flour tends to, even though it's a very light flour, tends to get a little lumpy. And so you want to really sift it through a fine sieve and a half cup. Two tablespoons of Dutch processed cocoa. And a teaspoon of salt. And just put that through the sieve. The cocoa, just two tablespoons, make it a nice dark color. And rub out any lumps that you may have. And one and a half cups of butter melted right into the bowl of your stand mixer. And beat this with one and a half cups of granulated sugar. That's a half. That's a cup. Add your red food coloring, and it's a half of a teaspoon. Oh, wow. Isn't that pretty? And one teaspoon of vanilla. Good quality vanilla extract. We now add two large eggs. Now you can add your dry ingredients with one cup of buttermilk. Here's our buttermilk. Again, the addition of the buttermilk, so good with the cocoa, making a very nice, tender cupcake. That's what we're after here. And there's one other ingredient, and that is baking soda mixed with two teaspoons of vinegar uh, and one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Oh, now watch the froth. Do you see what happens? It just froths up like that. Get it all in there with that little tiny bit of vinegar. Now that's a very pretty color batter. Put 
one scoop in each paper as neatly as you can. And this recipe makes 20 beautiful cupcakes. Transfer these to a 350 degree preheated oven and bake, rotating halfway through your baking time of about 25 minutes. Now these beautiful red velvet cupcakes can be topped with just powdered sugar, but infinitely better is a really luscious, fluffy cream cheese frosting. To make it a little bit pink, I'm incorporating just about two or three tablespoons of strained raspberry jam. It'll make it a little bit pink, give a little different flavor to the cream cheese frosting. Pretty, right? And uh, you can mix it all in or you can um, have it swirl, but I like it all mixed in, so it's really a pale, pale pink with a slightly raspberry flavor. Mm, it smells so good. And then just with an offset spatula, decide how much frosting to put on each of the cupcakes and chill them well before you serve them. So this is pretty. And because it has a little raspberry flavoring, you could even put, uh, for a dinner party, a little raspberry right on top. This is the perfect cupcake for pretty much any occasion. Enjoy. This recipe, adapted from my first entertaining book, is doubly delicious, topped with a rich chocolate ganache. For the mini Diablos, you need seven ounces of semi-sweet. I usually use French or Belgian chocolate. This is semi-sweet, and to be semi-sweet has to contain at least 35% of chocolate liqueur. So uh, cut this up into little pieces makes melting easier. And as I've shown you in the past, a serrated bread knife like this cuts the chocolate perfectly. There. So this goes right into a heat proof bowl because this is gonna be put over simmering water right now to melt the chocolate. And fits nicely here. You're creating a bain-marie or a double boiler effect here. Add two tablespoons of water to the chocolate and one stick of butter cut into little pieces. You can add it a little bit at a time, but I find that you can just put the whole thing in here easily and melt it all together. So that is the chocolate base for your little mini cupcakes. And these are very, very good. The reason being, I think, not only it's very little flour, almost like one of the original flourless chocolate cakes, but the secret ingredient, a quarter of a cup of raisins plumped in a quarter of a cup of scotch. This has to be done yesterday for today. So do it last night. The rest of this recipe is quite easy. Three egg yolks in a bowl and three egg whites in a mixer bowl. I'm using a good sized bowl here. Uh, now the egg whites will be beaten separately. The three egg yolks beaten with a whisk and two thirds of a cup of sugar. Beat these until they are nice and light. This is a French cake. I originally tasted something like this many, many years ago. So into your egg yolk, a pinch of salt. Chocolate is almost ready. I'm just turning off the heat because the water will continue to stay hot and melt the chocolate. So now this, you can pour right into your egg yolks. Scrape every little bit out. These are so rich that really one will satisfy you at the end of a meal. They're also a very charming addition to any dessert buffet and also a very nice little presentation at a wedding on pedestals. Okay, so that's nicely incorporated. Add quarter of a cup of cake flour. Just sprinkle that on and stir it in. So very little flour. And two thirds of a cup of finely, finely ground almonds, just like that. 
That too can be stirred in. And pour in your plumped scotch flavored raisins. Now to lighten the whole thing and give it a little bit of an ability to rise in the prepared cupcake pan, add your beaten egg whites. We will beat these until they're soft, heat with a little pinch of salt. I have buttered and floured these wonderful small cupcake molds. You're gonna get somewhere around 30 to 36 cupcakes. So here are egg whites, frothy and light. Take a few of them and fold them in just to lighten this very dense chocolate mixture. And then the rest. So take from the bottom and turn. So you'll have about twice as much batter as you had before you added the egg whites. And now we're going to use a two tablespoon ice cream scoop to form all our little cupcakes. And just drop by the scoopful right into the prepared cupcake tin or mini muffin tin, whatever you want to call it. But these are not too shallow. They are bite-sized. Preheat your oven at this point to 350 degrees. And these are going to bake only for 12 minutes. So you can make a whole lot of other things for a dessert buffet if you choose this as one of your star ingredients. Get these in the hot oven and turn on your timer 12 minutes. So these are just the perfect size. I like them upside down like this. Very sweet, but dipped in a nice shiny ganache, they really do shine. So just dip like this and invert. You can serve these in little cupcake papers, pretty little decorative ones, or you can serve them on plates without any embellishment. I also like to put a swirl of whipped cream on top, depending on what I'm serving them with. So continue dipping until the whole tray is done. Now, don't these look gorgeous? Let them set for at least 30 minutes before you try to arrange them on pedestals like this. And you can also garnish with candied flowers. I have some gorgeous pansies that I candied a while ago. These are edible, but they're very pretty. And you have a magnificent presentation for your dessert buffet. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you on the next episode of Martha Bakes. Fit a pastry bag with a round tip. Place the bag tip down in a tall glass. To fill the bag, fold the top over into a cuff. For the cleanest lines, fill the bag using two separate pastry bags filled with contrasting colors. Fill half the bag with frosting. Twist the bag closed and begin applying pressure. This creates a soft serve look when piped into a swirl.